This is my board, just a few weeks ago. This isn't just the story of how I fixed my broken board. This is the story of how I made it better than ever. After four years of daily abuse, here's the damage report. Battery holds maybe a mile of charge. The handle snapped months ago and the tie is completely flat. A new board costs thousands. So I guess I've got to fix this one. First, we need to see what we're dealing with. So let's take it apart. The fender comes off simple enough. That's the foot pad off. First, I think we deal with the battery. That should be just in this box. If I can get it out. And as we take the lid off, there's the battery. I'm not sure I want to mess with battery repairs. Lithium and mistakes don't mix. Besides, this stock battery, even when it was new, I could get maybe five miles of range. And as I'm going through all this trouble, I guess I might as well upgrade it. This battery I found online, it's got triple the capacity. That's 15 miles of range, much longer rides. That's gonna be fun. But there's a problem. The one wheel app that reads battery percentage is based on the stock battery. This bigger one, the app can't tell how much charge it's got. I don't want to suddenly find I'm out of charge and have to walk all the way home. After a bit of research online, I found the solution. This chip. Essentially, you wire it into the battery management system and it reads the voltage level. And from that, it can tell you how much charge it's left and it connects wirelessly to your phone. So I think this is going to work for me, but it does mean I'm going to have to cut some of these wires and solder this, something I've never done on something so expensive. I think I've checked the wiring diagram 20 times. Ooh, that felt wrong. I'm a little worried I'm going to break something. I can't leave these exposed connections. One bump on a ride, and this is a short circuit waiting to happen. So I'm going to cover the chip with tape. Now with the chip installed, I can finally put the new battery in. Except... It just doesn't fit. Ugh. It feels like it's just this corner. I reckon if I remove this plastic divider, it will fit. I'm sure it has a purpose, but what choice do I have? Okay, let's see if it now fits. It's a bit tight, but it fits. There we go. Now let's get it put back together again. Oh, it feels like I'm having to push far too hard to get this to fit. Okay, battery sorted. Though this seal is supposed to be waterproof, I want to be doubly sure. So I'm going to seal the whole box with this silicon. Every crack, every screw. This is the UK after all. It rains a lot. I don't want any moisture getting into this battery. Every seam, every possible entry point. Water is not getting in here. It's ugly, but it works. So the battery's all done and we've got triple the range, which is gonna be amazing. Except 15 miles standing on these completely flat foot pads, my whole foot is gonna go numb. Numb feet is quite common and it's really uncomfortable. I've read online concave foot pads can help lock your feet in and distribute the pressure better, but they're really expensive for what they are. So I need to find another solution. I found somebody has created a model to 3D print the foot pads. Let's try it out. A few hours later, it's looking pretty good. I think that's gonna work. And I'll order some better grip tape to lock my feet in. So the next issue to look at is this flat tire. This smooth tire is great on tarmac, but not so much off-road. So I think I'm gonna upgrade it with a tire with more grip. I've read online that a tire change is really hard without the proper tools, which I don't have. So this is gonna be interesting. First challenge, breaking the bead. Professionals will use the machine to push the rim off the tire, but I have determination. Nice, I think I can do this. That's the first one. Let's flip it over and try the other side. This is so much harder than it looks. Yes. This is when I learned breaking the bead was the easy part. Now I need to hook the lip of the tire over the rim. I've got these tire levers to help me do it. This is hard work.
The old tire sealant is making everything slippy. I can't get grip. I'm really fighting the rubber. Just go off. Just go off. I've dropped the clip inside the tire. After hours of trying, oh my God. I felt like giving up, but I wasn't about to give in. Let's try again. Right, let's see if this works. Slowly but surely, we're getting there. I can feel it coming. Get in! It's safe to say I was a little pleased, but that's only half the time. Let's go for round two. Almost there. It's so close. <sighs> Finally, I've got the old tire off this hub. You don't realize how much effort this was. It took me hours. But we're only halfway. The new tire still needs to go on. Ow. The last thing we need to do is set the bead. By inflating the tyre, the pressure should push it onto the rim. But it does need to go to pretty high pressure. This is a little scary. Tyres have blown. And with this much pressure, it doesn't end well. First bead done, just the other side to go. That pop is so scary. Quick, better release the pressure. Look at how the tire changes shape. Tire on, but it only takes riding over something sharp and I'm doing that all again. There's no way I'm risking a flat. So I'm gonna use this tire sealant. It sits inside the tire, any leak, any small puncture, and the pressure forces the sealant into the gap to seal the hole. This could help my tire last so much longer. The tyres are looking good, but with all these upgrades, this thing weighs a lot more. And the handle? Still broken. This handle is the second one I've put on. It seems this design is prone to snapping. And reading up online, a lot of people have had the same issue. Though it does have a nice mechanism where the handle folds back when not in use due to magnets. There's no way I'm spending another £70 for something I know is going to break. So I need to come up with a better solution to carry the ball around. I bought this handle, but to secure it, I need some specialised tools, which I haven't got. I need to think about how I'm going to solve this. I found this 3D model for a handle online. I guess if it breaks, I just print another. Perfect. Except the mounting system is different from the original and the magnet hole is the wrong size. So I think I'm going to fire up my 3D modelling system and make some changes. Hours later, and I have a handle to print. Because of the curve, I have to print it off in two halves. So let's stick it together. And while that dries, let's rip out the magnet from the old handle. Oh. 
glue the magnet into the 3D printed handle. And add the heat set threaded insert to secure it to the board. Will it work? With all these upgrades, I think now I'm close to being done. Though, if I've got a new and improved board, I think it needs to look the part. Last, my grip tape has arrived. This is far coarser than the stock grip tape. I need to be really careful when applying the tape so not to mess up the sensor. Even an air bubble might cause the sensor to misregister and send the board flying down the road with no one on it. Right, that's all the issues repaired and upgraded. Now I just need to see if I can get it back together and whether it's finally going to work so I can get back to riding. Mm -hmm.